Good afternoon, almost evening, um, everyone. Um, we're going to get started in just a few moments, just waiting for all of the attendees to trickle in. Um, my name is uh, Jewel Sparks. Students call me Miss Sparks. I'm the admissions associate here at Lick Wilmerding High School. And welcome to our second parent panel, um, Engaging with Lick Wilmerding High School. Um, this is our second to last virtual event, event of the season. It's been a long season for us, but we're super excited to finish off with a bang and, um, you know, share as much as possible with you all about the parent experience. Um, so with today, I I'm joined by five um, Lick families and parents um, who have multiple students at this school or students at the school, and they are very excited to share with you their experience engaging with our community over the years. So, um, if I could have each panelist share with me their name, um, your student or students, and what year they're in, what middle schools they attended, and then um, what made Lick stand out to you and your family when you were applying? And actually, just to get us started, um, I see the order of Brooke, then Steve, Mary, Yvonne, and Eugene. Okay, uh, my name is Brooke Tao. I have a junior at Lick and a freshman. The junior is Anuhea and the freshman is Cole. She goes by Coco. And uh, they both attended the Chinese American International School here in San Francisco. And what stood out to us was obviously <laughs> the shops, um, which you've probably seen online, but my uh, first daughter fell in love with the shops and, and that really attracted us. But also it was the warmth. I mean, it was hard. We had visited a few schools by the time we got to the Lick Open House, but just the, the warmth we felt from the Lick community and listening to Eric Temple speak and this, just the feeling of the people around us and the students, um, there was just a warmth that felt like home and that um, my daughters would find a place there. So um, so that's what stood out about Lick for us, the, the shops, of course, and the warmth of the community. Yeah, hi, my name is Steve. Um, we have a freshman at Lick, his name is Mateos. We also had a, um, my daughter just graduate this past year in May. Uh, she's Natalie, she was class of 2020. Um, and so um, for us, it was just a progression because um, we had just moved back to the Bay Area about uh, six and a half years ago. And, um, you know, my job took us overseas. And we, when we moved back, we weren't that familiar with, uh, and we're on the peninsula, and we were not that familiar with uh, the high schools uh, in, in the region. And it was really driven by my daughter, Natalie, sort of looking at schools in the city. Um, she was pulled immediately by just the, the diversity uh, the fact that it was in the city, uh, it pulled students from basically from all areas of the Bay Area. Um, and the fact that um, it had a strong um, uh, public service component to uh, the curriculum. And so while my daughter and my son are, uh, are vastly different in terms of personality and interest, uh, I think that sort of the common thread for both of them is public service, uh, some aspects of the arts, uh, and the fact that uh, the school just really pushes diversity from all angles. So um, those were the, I, I guess, the three main components that uh, pulled us to Lick. Uh, my name is Mary McPherson. I have four children, Sarah, uh, who graduated in 2015, Joe, 2017, Maggie, 2020 with Natalie, and um, we currently have a sophomore, James, Jimmy. Um, like Brooke, we were very impressed with the warmth um, and the culture, the small school feeling, but the really strong spirit that seems to feel like a 5,000 kids school, right? Um, we loved Elliott's uh, athletic open houses. We come from a small parochial school in North Beach and the kids had a really um, tight knit community. They went th to that school from pre-K through eighth grade, sort of a hard experience to duplicate, you know, uh, people who become family over the years. 
and you know, in the first few days of walking through Lick, not just the open houses, but the we decided to go to games and things too. We wanted to get a real feel for what the school was like outside of the open house um, arena. We just felt like it, we'd found a, a, another Saints Pierre and Paul, but on the west side of town. So we were we were really impressed and um, and continue to be so. Uh, at that time, Al Adams was headmaster and. Um, Eric's done such a great job of carrying that re really, you know, big baton, and uh, we've been really happy. Hi, my name is Yvonne. I have three daughters. Um, are currently a senior at Lick and a sophomore at Lick, and a little one uh, who's in second grade. Uh, we attended and attend San Francisco Friends School, and uh, what stood out to us about Lick was. Um, Kind of very similar to what everyone has mentioned, definitely a sense of uh, diversity in the community and um, of authentic sense of uh, everyone being welcomed uh, from the parent and the student perspective. And the mission of the school also uh, kind of meshed really well with our personal family values and, um, and uh, the academics. But, brought in all together was really what kind of pulled us to the school. Hi everyone, my name is Eugene and I have two daughters who are at Lick. Lily is a senior and Charlotte is a frosh. We live in the East Bay. Lily and Charlotte went to St. Paul's Episcopal School in Oakland, which is um, right across the street from Lake Merritt. They were lifers there, K-8. So we came from um, a private independent school. That was our background. We applied, obviously Lily was the uh, first applicant to Lick Wilmerding. And there are a lot of things that really drew her to the school. The academic excellence was something that she cared about and that we cared about uh, for sure. But then um, the curriculum, the access to the shops were a, a, a real pull, a real draw for her. Um, the sort of tactile or kind of Anesthesiology kind of curriculum was something that uh, really Lily loved. She's a, a crafty kind of person and likes to spend time, even now, whether it's jewelry making or sewing or going to the shops, it's great. She also really loved the urban environment. Uh, while we had an option to go ahead and send kids to high school in Oakland, she really loved coming into San Francisco, loved that feel, and then ended up uh, really loving the community as well. So uh, Charlotte is a little bit different from Lily, but so many of the same things that drew Lily to the group leading appealed to Charlotte. Awesome. Thank you um, so much for sharing um, a little bit about your experience um, and why Lick was so important to you and why Lick was special to you um, and your students when applying. Um, so a few of you had mentioned, um, you know, coming from smaller schools or coming from far away. Um, I'd like to know, um, sorry, <laughs> coming from maybe a different community or like, a, you know, whether you're coming from like a public school or parochial school or coming from um, a different community than Lick, like what were some of the ways that you found community here at Lick once you were finally here. And what were some of the ways that your student was able to find that sense of community as well? I can start. Um, so for us, for our family, from the parents' perspective, we uh, found a sense of community by becoming involved in a couple of committees and um, getting to know different families from different uh, grades and also fac faculty and staff. It was a great way to really also understand how the school works behind the scenes because as parents of, a high, school, of high school students, we don't really get that opportunity that you do in lower schools. Um, for my students, I think it was very similar. They've uh, took to sports, great way to meet other students and engage socially as well as athletically and also um, uh, through clubs. So those have been great and internships, great ways of connecting with different students. I can go next. Um, so for you know, it's, it's been a different experience for each kid. Um, some are maybe more sporty than others. The, the oldest was um, 
She's she's very politically minded. She was um, a, a pretty excited participant in El Wow. Um, for us as parents, uh, we got involved in committees. We um, were team parents for the sports that the kids all played: soccer, volleyball, that kind of thing. Um, that you know that plus um, some new family mentoring was that was a lot of fun once we learned the ropes we felt that it would be nice to pay that forward and we did the new family mentoring um when our oldest uh was a junior we got involved in grad night and i got really involved in grad night. i thought it was such an awesome experience for the seniors and for those who are listening if you don't know what grad night is grad night is a wonderful tradition that Lake Wormerding has a lot of high schools have for their their graduating seniors they take them after graduation for a, a night a uh, full night event from late night to early the next morning, keep them over, almost overnight and have this wonderful party and a, a good way for them to all say goodbye. Um, and so I, I was involved in that for six years, chairing three of those and and talk about a wonderful way to really get to know parents. I mean, you're, you're together for months to prepare and then you're there with them that night from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. the next day. And it's like going through war together. <laughs> um, and then that led to a spot, um, Yvonne and I, well, there's several of us, but um, uh, on the uh, Lake Wilmerding Parent Association um, uh, Executive Committee, I'm a VP of Engagement, Parent Engagement. It's probably gonna start sounding repetitive, but um, mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely my daughter, Anuhea, uh, the junior, she, she joined the cross country team her first, actually before school even started. And those are still her eight best friends. Um, to this day. So sports is a way. She's also very interested in, in tech, girls in tech. So she um, joined the tech club and um, found more friends. And as for me, I, you know, I'm a natural, I'm a fundraiser um, in my professional life. So I just said, oh, you know, make some annual appeal calls. So I got involved in fundraising. And then Eric Temple had kind of a, a thank you reception at his home. And some woman approached me who had a graduating senior saying, hey, you want to work with me on the new mentor family program, which Mary just mentioned. And I said, sure. And then at the event, she actually introduced me as the incoming chair of the new family <laughs> mentor program. So um, now I, I chair that program, which is just so wonderful because when you're accepted to look, you get paired with a family. And usually in your neighborhoods, so you get to learn about how you get involved, how you can get to school, what's been your experience, you know, so um, that's been great. So just kind of one thing led to another and just going to the sports events, you meet all the parents and you're all watching together and cheering for Lick and that's super fun. So the freshman is having a more challenging time creating community, but they're playing among us and they're doing social media stuff. And then now they're playing chess because of the queen's gamut, um, but she, they're finding their way and, and Lick is going out of their way to make sure they, they have a community. Yeah, the, the, the one thing I would add is, um, so sports, like uh, all the other parents have mentioned, is is uh, it's huge in terms of uh, just be, having access to um, just other uh, parents and um, just the community at large. But uh, the one thing I would add is my daughter, Natalie, was not athletic at all. And, and so she did vo uh, volleyball and it's no cut. So, um, you know, I think that it's, it's just inviting and um, she played for two years. Uh, and the first person that she met on the, her volleyball team um, turned out to be one of her best friends, one of three, four best friends that she has. So, um, you know, again, I echo what the other parents have said, but you don't have to naturally be sports inclined uh, to participate in, you know, with, with the sports activities at Lick. And real quickly, I'll, I'll ditto that Lily is by her own admission, like the least athletically inclined person there could be, would be caught dead on a court or a field. So we just let her uh, follow what she was interested in. And it took a little while. I, I'd say her first year, she spent more time just hitting the books and then really sort of expanded her horizons the uh, last few years. As far as the family, uh, we spend a little bit more time volunteering with the admissions office, doing open houses, just trying to meet families that way. Uh, that's something that we did to try to foster the sense of community within our household. Yeah, so um, real quick, a few of you had mentioned like volunteering with different events or being on different committees um, in the lit community. Have you seen like other families follow in the same type of um, engagement? And if so, like why do you personally or why do you think other members of the community are like involved the way that they are like personally why do you feel like 
you'd like to be involved in the community? Can I take a stab at that? So when I first got involved with grad night, it was um, in 2014, I guess. And so by the time 2015 rolled around, I felt like I knew the ropes pretty well, but I'd seen some similar patterns. It was always the same families, right? And it's not because newer families weren't willing to participate. They just don't know the means to do that. And we just keep tapping the same people we, we know and we, we lean on already. So the, my co-chairs in 2015, we decided to send an email outside of the school, you know, like no e-tiger, none of that. We sent a personal email to each family in our graduating class of 2015 and said, hey, if you want to get involved, this is what grad night is. This is how we need help. You know, many hands make light work. Let's all have a dinner together. And we, we kind of booked this big conference room at one of our offices. Um, and we made a really big spread of food. It was really fun. And we had a whole, like, I don't know, like 30 parents show up. It was amazing. And and, and all those parents, I mean, we didn't need 30 parents for Gretna, but everybody, you know, picked up a, a shovel and did something. And it was, it was such a great, really special night. It was in the Mill Valley Community Center where we used to go. We don't go there anymore, but where we used to go. And everybody had some small job, you know, from hosting, um, doing the toast when the kids walked in or taking pictures and they got off the bus or whatever it was. And all of these faces I hadn't seen before. And then, and then some of them had younger kids and they, and then they started coming into the fold to, to, to participate in other things. And I just, I just think it just takes one person to just reach out to try to, you know, make, make some bridges there. And I think I'll add a little bit to what Mary said, um, because something that I've also noticed in one of the draws to Lick for us was the sense of community. And so we wanted to get to know the community a little bit better. And we had known from past experiences that the best way to do it was to get involved. And so that was our kind of our draw into being involved in different committees. And I have found that other families also kind of tap into that um, to get involved and also to kind of get to know the school better. I think that um, they understand that that's a good window into what's happening behind the scenes. And sometimes our students aren't really kind of forthcoming with that information. So thank you. Um, so kind of shifting gears here a little bit. Um, I know that a lot of the time there's um, questions about academics and like parent involvement in academics and your students life. Um, so how would you describe the type of academic engagement you have or the type of engagement you have in your students' academic life. Um, do you feel like you communicate with the teachers, advisors? Are you, um, you know, does it feel like your student is independent? Just what is your experience behind the academic um, relationship you have with your student? I'll take a stab at this <laughs> and hopefully I'm not deviating from the party line, but uh, historically I'd say my wife and I have been pretty hands off in terms of our kids academics. Um, and that's largely been true at, at liquid reading as well. So um, I, you know, I never check my kids homework or, or their long-term projects to see how they're doing or whether things are turned in on time. Um, always trusted that they would go ahead and have their executive function skills up to date and that they'd be able to go ahead and set deadlines and work on long-term projects by themselves. Um, my wife happens to be a high school teacher. So she's a big proponent of students advocating for themselves. And um, so if ever they have a problem, we, we sort of say like, well, what are you gonna do about it? There have been a couple times I'd say when I would just reach out to a teacher just to make sure that, um, in particular, this year with Charlotte, our, our frosh, just you know, because of the remote learning, um, want to make sure that everything's going fine and things are copacetic. But uh, our engagement has been relatively, I don't want to say limited, but just hasn't been too much of an issue, luckily. So far, so good. Yeah, and, um, like we're, we're pretty hands off as well. I mean, our daughters, and I still have a son at Case, um, comes from a pretty rigorous background in, in, in schoolwork, and so we're, we're fairly hands-off. It's the time management aspect that we saw, like, she's very 
very public about what's due when. And then as it kind of gets closer, I'm like, that's going to be interesting to pull off. Um, so maybe little kind of gentle reminders, like, don't you have that huge architecture project due <laughs> like coming up? So that's really, I mean, they're they're very independent, advocate for themselves, but it's it's the time management that has come a little slower, <laughs> but it's better. Yeah, I, I would, um, uh, you know, I would also agree with that point. Um, uh, like the other parents, like Eugene and Brooke, uh, we're pretty hands off about the actual workload and what they're really doing. And um, I think it's really important as a, especially as a frosh and, you know, um, with all the other parents who've had different sort of kids going through this, you know, the basically same curriculum, our daughter was uh, very sort of focused and sort of timely. Uh, I think she was just a little more mature at the stage. You know, she'd have her schedule out and she'd sort of map things out about uh, her kind of executive sort of motor, motor skills or what much more developed. Uh, I think with our son, um, it's uh, we have to prod him a little bit in the sense that, hey, did you, some, similar to what Brooke said, like, hey, you said you had this, you know, you have all this work done. He's like, oh, dad, I got this, right? And, you know, he'll be up late. And um, so we've been trying to encourage him to do work earlier so he could have free time later. But I think apart from that, it's just really kind of, you know, they, they need to develop the skills to, to manage their workload on their own. I think sleep is a big value for us and everyone in the lit community. So that is equal, like you're going to go to bed at a certain hour, whether it's done or not. And they're able to do it. It's, it's not an unbelievable, like they have the time to do it. It's just using that time. Um, so you can go to get a good amount of sleep, eight, nine hours. Yeah. Definitely. I remember being a student and just having to prioritize as well. It, Definitely, parents, you're doing a great job supporting your kids. I do have to say that the kids, they'll figure it out. Um, and I agree that LIC is does encourage your students to be independent. Um, and I think the teachers and faculty and staff members like help with that as well. And I know, um, so Eugene, you were talking a little bit about, um, you know, communicating with your students' teachers. Um, did anyone else have experiences with like, what like what does communicating with like an advisor look like for your student or for you? Like what does communicating with a teacher look like for you? Like, I don't know, is it easy to do that? How do, how do you feel about that? I can talk a little bit about that because one of my students just actually um, had a meeting with uh, one of the deans um, that she feels really connected with and um, personally, we haven't, I think like everybody else has spoken to self, uh, the students are very much part of being self-advocates and um, those are skills that they're gonna be using in college and beyond. So I'm very happy that like really kind of um, emphasizes and enforces that. But I have found that both of my students have reached out to the teachers. The teachers have been really good about responding, setting up meetings, especially now that we have been in COVID, they have been extremely accessible. And um, I feel like the lines of communication have been very open. So have been really great. Even after graduation, some of the teachers remain in contact with our, our children and are, are close. It's, I mean, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, just amazing. And, and the and the lifelong passions that they've, and we're getting a jewelry resin kit for Sarah. She's 23 because she's dying to make more jewelry. You know, it's, um, it's amazing. We've never had an occasion to speak with a teacher, but um, I think the advisors kind of vary from advisor to advisor. Our daughter, Anahea, has the most incredible advisor who's constantly pushing her to go outside her comfort zone and just almost knows her better than well, not better than we do, but it's just really, really just invested in our daughter and, and kind of our freshmen, it's, it's, it's more hands off. So I think it, it varies advisor to advisor, but um, you know, when you're a freshman, you're given a group of 12, you know, 10 or 12 kids that you are with for the next four years with your advisor and advisory. And that's, a, that's fantastic, you know. I can definitely speak to like that advisor feeling or that advisor support. 
um, my advisor was the bridge between me and my parents sometimes just communicating and my mom would be like, oh, so I didn't know you had this going on. I'm like, who told you? Advisor. <laughs> so um, yes, I'm glad that there's good communication still going on there. Um, so a few of you talked about having seniors um, or having students who graduated. Um, and I know some members in our audience um, have questions about the college application process. So if you're either currently going through the application process um, or have gone through the process, what did that look like for a parent? Um, how did it feel like for a parent? And maybe like, what was the type of communication you had with your student's college counselor? Uh, I'll, I'll take a shot at that and then let Mary go. Mary has the historical experience. <laughs> because my oldest is a senior right now, we're sort of in the throes of the college application process. And uh, I suppose it may depend on exactly how you define it. I, I you know, it's, it's obviously a, a unique time for you know, seniors right now. We were lucky in the sense that Lily has an older sister who's two years older and she did all her college visits two years ago. We dragged Lily along everywhere and told her, uh, you know, pay attention because we're not doing this again. <laughs> and it turned out to be prescient because now she can't visit any campuses. Uh, but as far as the actual application process, our experience so far has been uh, really great with the college counseling office. Um, Lily was assigned an advisor in the department in the spring and met with her remotely. Uh, she got a sort of a prioritizing exercise card with maybe 20 different factors to consider as she's thinking about selecting or narrowing down potential colleges. And then based on that, that cheat sheet, I suppose, and the interviews with her counselor, she was able to come up with uh, uh, a rough list of schools, and then she sort of narrowed that and refined that over the summertime. Um, I'd say our family hasn't been too involved as far as the schools that she has focused on. We may ask questions, did you consider this, or why are you considering that? Uh, but she's been driving, driving the bus in terms of the applications, the essays that she wants to write, the teacher she's going to seek recommendations from. Um, but we've been in very good communication with uh, the department and feel like she's been very well prepared. Um, I, I have, it's been different with every child. With, with the oldest, we were complete, or I was a complete hovercraft. I was terrible. We had a whiteboard in her room. I think she applied to 33 schools and we had color codes. It was, it was awful. It was, I, I let myself, you know, I, I gave in to, to her anxiety about the process and just thought that maybe with with more information, more traveling, more, 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 it might help her feel like she was doing due diligence and due diligence would lead to some serenity. And that turned out to be a major mistake. <laughs> but, you know, we learned the lesson with the first as we always do, right? And then the second was easier. And we, we, with him, we focused more on um, location and sort of um, environment, a physical geographical environment. He's he's a kid that like doesn't like hot weather. He loves the fog. He loves the coast. And you know we kind of let him drive that train. And, and I I really backed off. Really, really, really backed off for him. For Maggie, graduated last year. I totally backed off. I let her drive the train. Um, I I only wanted her to think about, you know, once we drop her off and we get on the plane and we're gone is she really going to love that that physical environment that school spirit or lack thereof or big school small school all those things and um she settled on a location that worked out really well for her but now of course because of the pandemic she's doing a gap year in new hampshire so um with the fourth i think we're going to be even more hands-off he's more driven by sports so that's a different conversation altogether but um yeah I, i've learned my lesson i mean these these are really smart kids with a whole lot of tools and we don't need to overthink this for them, it, it, it probably hurts more than it, than it helps. Yeah, I'll just jump in. Um, we, we had our uh, first college process last year, and um, I think the inclination is for us as parents is to uh, try to, you know, sort of layer ourselves into the process as much as we, as much as we can. But I think 
as Mary pointed out, um, you know, I mean, Licta just does a incredible job of preparing the students. And um, I think one of the issues for us was that, um, you know, they, she had the advisor, there, there's a process. Uh, we went to go visit schools. Uh, you know, we, we did the same thing where we kind of looked at her list and said, well, why are you applying there? Why are you, why are you not applying here? Would you consider these schools? But ultimately the list that was sort of refined was the list that she wanted to, that, that she came up with. Um, and ultimately, um, I, I think the process, I'm looking back on it now as our first, it was, um, you know, obviously there's some anxiety and, you know, what to expect and so on and so forth. But, you know, when we reflect back on it now, I think it's probably as smooth as it possibly could have been. Um, as, as I mentioned, that the process is that um, the kids are incredibly capable. I mean, um, the kids coming out of leg, it's just by the time they're seniors, there's, um, you know, and you hear it from other parents and we didn't believe it when we first got to the community, you know, we, we entered the community, but um, they come out so well equipped, not just from a maturity standpoint, but just the actual skills that you need to survive, right? They're, they're good writers, they're good communicators. Uh, they're very thoughtful about what they wanna do. Uh, you know, the, their likes, their dislikes, um, totally different from, from my process when I went to school. It was just like, okay, that's the school you're going to go to. That's the school that you got into. That's the school you're going to go to. And I didn't have a choice. But um, the kids today, they're just, they're just, they just have it put together. And lastly, what well, I'll add, because all this is also running through for us, has been the reminders that the, um, the college team has sent out. Uh, the deadlines have been great, especially because we're going through this process for the first time with our oldest daughter and she's really on it. And so to also get those reminders for her has been very helpful. So it's been great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so for everyone, like where, like, how have you seen growth in your student over their, or students over their times at Lick. Um, yeah, just how have, you, have, how have you seen your student grow over the years? I, I can jump in first. Um, so with my eldest, Natalie, she was, um, she was painfully shy up, up until sort of middle school. And uh, as I mentioned, we, we pulled her out of middle school. We were abroad, we were in Singapore and we, we moved back. Um, and even after we moved back, um, and she had all the anxiety about moving back, not having friends, having uh, gone through a different sort of curriculum. And um, as, as soon as she entered Lick and um, started to really immerse herself in the community, uh, academically, socially, uh, all the extracurricular activities, um, that, that kind of shyness, I, I, I think if you asked her today, she'd still say like, She's more of a sort of a, she um, would like to observe first as opposed to speak first, uh, but she learned how to advocate for herself, um, you know, to participate. She knows that if you don't participate, you're gonna be left out. You have to, you have to voice and you don't have to do it in a way that is sort of front and center all the time, but just to get involved. Uh, and I think a lot of that had to do with the uh, encouragement that the community really pushed and, um, you know, supported her with. Uh, and so I would say uh, like self-advocacy, um, speaking up, getting involved, um, communicating, um, you know, how you feel about things uh, is really important. And um, those are skills that she definitely picked up during her four years at Lick. I think for our junior, Anuhea, it's really been about finding her passion and following her passion. I think in middle school, she felt like she had to do it all gymnastics, softball, hula, <laughs> um, and, and didn't speak up much about it, just kind of, you know, did it all. Um, but at Lick, she's really like, I don't really want to do softball anymore, <laughs> dad, <laughs> or, or I, I really, I really love architecture, and, and I, I really love technology, and just kind of getting excited about something and, and following her passion um, has been nice to see, uh, to, to pick and choose where she really wants to put our time and then just dive in a thousand percent. I, I've been impressed with um, 
and sometimes I feel a little uh, um, a little on the receiving end of how passionate our kids can be, and they want to make sure that I, I understand that you know what I need to know to operate in the world as well. But um, that their their words, their actions, their lack thereof, um, act, you know, if they, with inaction, all of that has such power on a small scale, a big scale. They are very mindful and. I mean, some of that is just maturity, right? But I know a lot of that is is just being, you know, absorbing all all of the the wonderful teachings and community, you know, the mission of Lick Wilmerding. And I'm I'm just, in in, you know, we can watch a TV show, and I and I will hear the sophomore, you know, question the way this you know this actor reacted to another actor or you know or or a newspaper article or whatever it is on on whatever scale whatever stage they they have an opinion i'm impressed with the opinion how they formulated that opinion how they're not afraid to share it and and make sure that they're you know they declare it and and without without shyness about it and um it's just it seems to have permeated all aspects of their lives and how they relate to their friends how they relate to their parents their coworkers it's, um, I mean, they're, they're, they're socially responsible, thoughtful citizens. And that, I mean, that's, that's the Lick Wilmerding mission, I guess, right? We, we're such a diverse student body, a diverse community. And yet, you know, singularly, these children are just such wonderful, thoughtful, mindful, socially responsible kids. And I'm, again, I'm just so impressed. Has anyone else kind of felt that same type of growth in their own student or Mary maybe like how has that affected your personal like thoughts on public purpose since you talked a little bit about our mission right right you know my kids have taught me to slow down and you know and I, just the the speed in which we all live our life you know the some of the effects of that speed can be, you know, maybe being cavalier about certain circumstances out there or just ignorant about some things. And our, our kids have taught me to just slow down, listen, you know, quiet the noise, hear what's really important, think about it for a minute. Just Andrew talking to us before the panel started saying, just sit with some of these questions for a minute before you just leap in, you know, and, and, and respond. And that's, I mean, that the way that they've taught me to be, uh, um, you know, I don't know if I'd say a better person because I, I mean, we all strive for that every day, right? But to, to just think more about how my actions can affect others. And I, I, I'm sure that's a lot, a lot of lit going on there, not just from their, their teaching teachers and the, and the faculty and the, and the people they've been around, but their friends. I mean, that for us, one of the big pulls to lick from the very beginning was we were just so impressed with the kids, these, these warm, welcoming, you know, love, lovely children. And we wanted, we wanted peers like that for our kids. And, you know, like Brooke said, her cross country, her daughter, daughter's friends, her st still her eight best friends, all of our kids' best friends, the, the kids who have graduated are still those kids from Lick. And, and they, they've enjoyed their college friends, but they, they come back to their soulmates from Lick Wilmerding and, and these kids come over and I'm just, oh my gosh, I love them so much, right? They're, you know, they embrace those principles and, and they live them. I think for us also kind of um, adding on to what Mary said has been the richness of conversations around the dinner table is just the amount of um, growth that we do as a family with these conversations, even our little one um, is being exposed to this. And, and so that wealth of um, information and the way that they express it and they share it and they give space for um, everyone to have a voice at the table. Um, I think really resonates with us and the growth that we have seen in our kids. I think I think we got a flicker of it when we visited Lick, and that's why it just stayed with us through all the visits of the high schools we went about this this compassion and helping others and and reaching a hand back because I mean even in in the math class like it's it's almost it's almost beautiful I mean. The, the value was in helping your classmate understand, not in you excelling, like a classmate would make a Quizlet for the whole class. And just just this helping each other pervaded almost every aspect of Lick and the cross country team. There was a story of the, the, the girls cross country team has now won the state championship twice in a row forever. But there was a story of this freshman who was on the state cross country team and a senior and the senior was like just about to give up. 
And the freshman during the race was like, come on, Allison, we can do this. And, and, and Allison recorded the story and Allison, like it just, she picked it up a gear and it was very close and they ended up winning the state championship. But like the freshman just encouraging the senior to like, we got this. And, and, and there's so many, so many examples of that. I mean, Eric Temple, when all those fires were going on, you know, he, he sent out an e-tiger announcement saying, if anybody doesn't have electricity or needs a shower or, you know, our school is open, you can take a shower here and families can hang out, you know, we have Wi-Fi. And so there's just so many examples that have just driven that home about a genuine concern about the world they live in, leaving it a better place and, and helping each other. It's, it's I, I don't, I haven't seen it anywhere else as much as I see it at Lake and that's just, that's just great. Yeah, Brooke, you're hitting on a really great question. We actually received a question before this panel um, that asked, how would we describe the atmosphere at Lick specifically as it relates to competitiveness? Um, because I think it's rumored that we're very competitive and less collaborative um, than other independent schools. Um, and I see you shaking your head. Like, do other parents feel that same way? Like, what has been your experience um, in the competitive versus collaborative um, spectrum at, here at Lick. I have felt that my students um, and their friends are always collaborating and helping each other. Um, they call each other all the time with homework, uh, with projects. So I had, it's interesting, I had never even thought about like in that kind of light because for us, the experience has been kind of one of collaboration um, and teamwork more than anything else. Yeah, I'm finding that, yeah, even with our frost and it's been much more difficult, obviously because of um, distance learning and uh, the fact that the kids have not been able to build the, the and solidify the social circles uh, that they would have under sort of normal circumstances. But uh, already the fact that, you know, they have their study groups, um, they formed, you know, um, sort of um, groups where they can support one another. Um, and yeah, I, I, I would echo Yvonne's comments. I, I don't think we felt that previously and we don't even feel it today, despite the fact that I think we could probably say that it's, you know, it's, it's awkward and uh, maybe the support groups wouldn't have formed as quickly as they normally would have, but uh, that's not been the case at all for us. And kind of shifting towards the parent side of things, um, if you'd like to speak from the I perspective, like how has your experience been collaborating with other parents in the lit community? How were you able to find maybe some adult friends in our community? I see a lot of smiles. So this kind of like makes me happy. I'm excited to hear what you all have to say. <laughs> Um, I mean, I'll, I'll just chime in real quickly. Um, and I, I've said this on numerous occasions. Um, I, I, and this is just, you know, just pure, just um, uh, being me, me being authentic and transparent. And, um, and it's easy to, I think, especially in this type of environment, find communities where um, it's not genuine. It's not, you know, everyone has ulterior motives. Um, it's not, you know, the most friendly environment in, you know, that, that could be, you know, kind of what one, you know, might expect in a, you know, with a school this competitive and with all the things that has to offer. But, um, in all the years that we've, we've been part of Lick, I don't think we've met one bad family, like not one person where we're like, geez, you know, this guy's getting on my nerves or, um, you know, they're, they're dominating the conversation. Um, I think everyone's highly respectful uh, engaged, uh, considerate, compassionate, um, just like people that you would want to, um, socialize with, uh, even away from school. Um, I think Mary mentioned it, you know, you invite people over 30 people show up, you got this great spread going. Um, uh, and it's just, it's just good people. And I, I would say that, um, you know, to the point where it's like, you know, you'd say it's like salt of the earth type of, of a community. And so, um, Honestly, this the, the Lick community is great, very supportive, um, and have made great friends through through the years. I totally agree with Steve. 
um, at the at the um, PA uh, board meetings. We have these great. We start the meeting with everybody, you know, maybe have a word of the day, a word that might describe how you're feeling, and we go around the room and talk about hope or gratitude or you know despair or whatever it is. And suddenly, you know, within 15 minutes, everybody feels a little bit more connected because there's that much thought that's put into a meeting. It's not just an agenda, right? It's about the connection as well. And and those meetings are, you know, our, our mission at the meetings is how to get together to build the community even stronger than it already is, right? So yeah, we have an agenda to get through certainly, but it's but everyone knows the goal, which is to try to bring more, even more people into the fold and have, have that tether even stronger. Um, in terms of meeting people and, and speaking from the I perspective, I mean, we have great friends from years ago, from when Sarah was there, when Joe was there. Um, you know, I have moms I go to dinner with once a quarter. We take walks now on Ocean Beach because of the pandemic. Um, you know, people that, you know, Thanksgiving morning, we're texting each other with pictures of the kids. You know, it's, it's you know, like my kids love to joke. They wish, they know that they wish I, I went there. Did I say that right? They know that, that I wish I went there. <laughs> but anyway, so, you know, it's just great. The, the sports families, I mean, you, you just get so the bonds or, you know, it's a small school, right? So it's it's easy to form some some friendships pretty darn quickly. And especially if, you know, you're together for four years. And then if you start doing some committees together, then it just gets that much stronger. But it's it's pretty easy to get close to people despite it being a high school environment. Yeah, and I think yeah, I was, know. oh, go ahead, go sorry. Ahead. I was gonna say, I think I was smiling as well because I was thinking of those uh, parent association meetings that we had. Um, it was great to meet all these parents. And just like Mary said, I have made amazing friends that we go on walks and that have really, we stuck together, um, especially now that we can't really be in person as often as we would like to. Um, it's been a great way of reinforcing those friendships. And again, the community that like really, has um, kind of been what we thought it was and then some. I was just gonna add, a, I'm not sure this is really addressing the question, but um, it, my daughter Lily loves Lick Wolverine. She She's a senior now and I think she's gonna be very sad to graduate in some sense. And I'm gonna be sad to see her graduate. She's loved going to school for the academic challenge. She loves the diversity of thought that's offered by the community. She loves the breadth of opportunities, you know, outside the classroom that you can get involved in that maybe aren't offered at other schools. So um, it's no exaggeration to say that when summer vacations would end, she would look forward to that first day of school. She's sad that she can't be on the campus right now, but she understands it completely. And um, she had such great enthusiasm and still does for the school uh, as a parent. I, I sometimes feel like I, I want some of that. Uh, <laughs> I want to go ahead and really support that, that experience for her. And, and the way I can do that is by becoming a little bit more involved than maybe I otherwise might not be. And, um, you know, we all know that you sort of get out what you put in. So it's been easy. Uh, I spent a little more time doing admissions work, whether it's open houses or being a mentor, uh, being a mentor family, but it's a really nice way to meet the other great families that are part of the community. And I think the, de the deans are fabulous and they, the school goes out of their way to bring the parents together for meetings and bring up issues that are relevant to each grade, like freshmen, <laughs> you're like, okay, is my kid gonna be partying? You know, there's high school. And they're like, no, like we, they are not allowed to, I mean, it's just a, a value that they are not allowed to go to parties till they're juniors or seniors, like we, you know, so all it, it addresses each of your concerns at each level. And then you get to meet um, the parents. And, and again, like the deans are fabulous. They've been there forever. And it's really nice to have those gatherings where the parents can exchange <laughs> information to some extent, but I've become good friends kind of with my daughter's friends, parents, because sometimes we like to circulate, do you know this has happened? You know, like just, <laughs> are you cool with this? <laughs> Especially recently, um, you know, going out and being masked and being being thoughtful and being outside. So so those are kind of my circle of friends is who she's kind of brought to the table. <laughs> and people are so interesting. Like I find like everyone I meet at Lick, like the more I talk to them, they're just so interesting and they have so many different perspectives. And I mean, there's 77 different middle schools that are represented in well, my daughter's junior class. So there's just so much to learn from each other. This, 
like I'm smiling because I'm thinking of my mom as you all are talking and I was actually talking to my mom the other day and she's like oh I was talking to like so-and-so I'm like you mean so-and-so's mom and they're like yeah and I'm like well I haven't talked to that kid in forever and you're still talking to their parents <laughs> and she's like oh yeah we're like tight I'm like okay <laughs> So um, I think that just goes to like show like what all you are saying is like sometimes even the parents like it is a tight knit community and the parents like get close and become real friends with each other. So thank you. Um, kind of on the topic of um, well, still community, of course, but I know Yvonne, you were on the chair for the um, LU Family Network. Um, what kind of support do you find, um, for this question is for everyone, what kind of support is there for parents? Um, I know we've had, you know, parents coming from Peninsula, East Bay, things like that. So it might, they might find it harder to like connect with more local parents. Um, but like, what are the different supports that there are for parents who might feel like this, they aren't quite belonging in the space quite yet. So like incoming families. Um, I'll talk a little bit since you uh, mentioned um, the uh, Family Network for Latinos Unidos. And so there I can say that we definitely make it a point to reach out to those families and to make sure that they feel welcome, especially, like you said, the new families, even transfer families, so that they kind of get a feel for what the community looks like, who to go to when they have a question, um, how to navigate um, the website, and um, definitely encourage them to also get involved and connect that way through, um, through the school. And we've also had a great opportunities to connect um, with other families uh, through that. So it's a very diverse group of um, incoming um, parents that, come, that we engage with. Um, I'll jump in. As, as an East Bay family, one of the things that we've been involved in, or I should say the school has facilitated, there's usually, in, in normal times, uh, an East Bay family's picnic, usually at the beginning of the year. It's a nice opportunity to meet some of the families who live in Oakland or Berkeley or in the greater East Bay. And then uh, my family, I think I may have mentioned, we have served as a mentor family for incoming frosh families. Uh, and again, in better times, we usually host a brunch or maybe an ice cream social and just do it a couple of times in this, um, in this semester, in the fall semester, and then again in the spring, just to go ahead and touch base with the family, see how they're doing, make sure that they're, they're, you know, their questions are being answered, and just to get to know them a little bit better, not just you know, how their kids know one another, but their, uh, their parents as well. And I should also add, um, on behalf of the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion for our school, that we also put together different events for different groups in the community, like the LGBTQ, um, the um, BSU, Black Family Network, um, the Latinos Unidos, and um, also different, like the uh, East Bay um, families. So we're definitely always constantly thinking about what the um, lit parent community needs in way of connecting and bring everyone together with resources. Thanks Yvonne and um, Eugene for that. Um, so we have about five minutes left and I wanna wrap up with this last question. So um, in your own words, every parent, please describe um, the lit community. Or how would you describe the lit community? <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'll go ahead and jump first. Um, as I think about it, Luke Wilmerding, and this has already been expressed, I think multiple times uh, by the panelists, it's, it's an incredibly diverse community. It, it's true, there aren't any single feeder schools, uh, into the Wilmerding, there are 
you know, 70 plus middle schools that are represented in any given class. And so you have geographic diversity, you have economic diversity, and you also have a community as you, you know, people can tell, is really, really engaged. They're engaged in a community for the advancement of their students. And um, it's a community that is civically minded as well. I mean, I think Jewel talked a little bit about the public purpose mission of the school, and that really does have an impact. Um, it's an important part of the Lick Wilm Reading framework. It's not just an afterthought. And I think it does raise a level of consciousness and civic mindedness, not just among the students, but among the families. Uh, I think I see it in our own household. Lily has done a lot of, I don't want to call it community service, but service learning, which is sort of an extension of some principles from her middle school. And you know, her enthusiasm or exuberance for that is infectious. And it has a gravitational pull because our family, as a result, uh, gets a little bit more involved in the community as a result. So my viewpoint is it's a very diverse, engaged community with um, a sense of a higher purpose. I would say um, you almost expect the academic rigor and excellence and great teaching. What I didn't expect was just how much investment goes into helping to raise really thoughtful, empathetic, kind, caring human beings that are going to go off into the world in a few years. And so um, that's how I would describe the lit community. It's just um, a really thoughtful, kind group of kids at a time in high school when you're not always thinking that way. And um, it's just really nice to see. Academics you expect, but the, the investment in these young people and what they're going to do when they leave is, is great. I don't know if I could say it any better than either of those two wonderful panelists. I mean, it, that you can take a teenager and, and instill in them this sense of higher purpose, as Eugene described, you know, without guilt, right? But I mean, just be, because they, they want to, and they, they want to make the world a better place, and they want to, they want to contribute to this, you know, um, better conversation of, um, throughout the world. They're, they're engaged, they're, they're smart, they're thoughtful, they're kind, they're loving, um, and they're very, very supportive. And, and they, they seem to me completely selfless. And I, I don't, you know, these are teenagers and that's mind boggling to me, but anyway, um, it's, there's, it's imp impossible to say very briefly what I think about like one morning, but Eugene, I thought you said it really brilliantly. Yeah, um, you know, the, our experience has been um, just with, um, with, our, with Natalie, uh, what we're seeing with Mateos, and especially, um, as everyone has pointed out, just the, just the circle of friends, the, the, the kids that you meet. Um, I, I think it, you know, the level of maturity that's ultimately um, sort of imbued in the kids, um, the social mindedness, um, yeah, I, I think the the four years, um, it's it's obviously just the first semester with Mateos, but the four years that we experience with our eldest is, um, you know, it just really transforms them to be uh, people of character and just socially minded and just engaged. And so, um, yeah, uh, you know, as Mary said, um, everyone's just, you know, said it probably better than I could, but um, I just echo everyone's comments. Um, it's just a, it's just a very unique experience for for our teenagers. And I guess I can, um, everyone has just expressed themselves so well. Uh, when I think of like, I think of um, openness, thoughtfulness, um, engagement, and um, again, all these wonderful skills that our, our kids are really taking with them and they're creating just amazing adults and brings me a lot of hope for our future. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for your time, for your lovely stories and being um, vulnerable and open to sharing um, your stories with us and all of our, our attendees. Attendees, thank you for sh coming here. Um, this, again, is our last installment, but we will be um, still running our Connect with an Ambassador program and all of these parents um, 
our ambassadors for our community. So if you want to connect with one of these parents or um, other parents that we have in this program, um, Andrew is, Mr. Andrew is going to put a link in the chat for you all. Um, and then if you all have any other questions or concerns about anything, feel free to email us at admissions at lwhs.org. Um, again, thank you so much for your time and we hope you have um, a wonderful holiday season. Bye everyone.